This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Okay, so Spider-Man No Way Home is right around the corner, but just before the movie comes out, I thought we'd do this one more time and give our final predictions and theories for the film. Lots of stuff there is now out on the movie, and throughout this video, we're going to be going over what we know, whilst also trying to figure things out from what's been shown in the trailers and TV spots. Spoilers ahead if we're right, so if you don't want to know, then I suggest you move out the way like girls do when Tobey Maguire is dancing down the street. Please hit the thumbs up button, and also don't forget to subscribe for videos like this every day. Without the way, thank you for clicking this. Now let's get into our No Way Home predictions. Now before we jump into that, I just kind of want to talk about the way the world is right now. I feel we very much live in a two tier society at this point and honestly I'm just sick of all the conspiracy theories, misinformation and people just saying whatever they want to fit their agendas. It's really sad seeing family members and friends spouting off complete nonsense and I can't wait until this weekend when we see Toby and Andrew are in the movie and this is over. What did you think I was talking about? Yeah, so at this point, I think the first prediction is that Toby and Andrew Garfield are definitely in the film. There's been so many leaks, mistakes in the trailers, and at this point, I'd bet my grand's house on it. Yes, granny, off to the old people's home you go. Now, the iconography used in the trailers and TV spots is clearly aping things from earlier iterations, such as us getting first person views of each Spider Man, which we see happening in the bridge scene. We also have things like the goblin mask being trashed and left behind whilst he runs down an alley, which is somewhat reminiscent of the scene from Spider-Man 2. There's so much in them, I think, to the point that it's at least paying homage to the point it all seems to be done to foreshadow them coming in. Beyond that though, I was talking to Ryan Airy about this the other day, and we actually think that there could be more spider people in it that we don't know about yet. Toby and Andrew have pretty much taken up all the talking points, but I'd love to see someone like Emma Stone showing up as Spider-Gwen. If Nicolas Cage showed up as Spider-Man Noir, I think that the cinema would explode, and potentially this could be what's being hinted at in the trailer when Strange says he can't stop them coming through. I think that Toby and Andrew will be in a good chunk of the film, and that they won't just show up for the final battle like the marketing is leading us to believe. I'd love it if this multiversal portal brought across people from the Spider-Verse, and though that's a long shot, I think it would work really well. Now though we are expecting a lot of major twists and turns, I think that the movie will be pretty straightforward. I can imagine that the film will open right after the events of Far From Home, as has been shown in some of the clips, and from there Peter will hand himself in, get off because of Matt Murdock, then go to Strange, interrupt the spell, and bring the villains from the trailer into the MCU. This will include him coming face to face with Dr. Octopus, who I'm guessing will be stopped by the nanotech interacting with his tentacles, which will then allow him to once more control the AI. He'll go to the Sanctorum prison and will become somewhat of an ally. I think from this point on, we'll watch as Peter goes to stop Electro, is interrupted by the Sandman, and he'll then capture them both. He'll then meet the Goblin, and we'll learn that all the villains died because of the Spider-Man of their universe. Peter will then steal the magic cube that's holding them in place, and there'll be a chase in the mirror dimension between Peter and Strange, which will allow the villains to have time to escape. Goblin will then probably go after Aunt May, and I'm guessing that in the scene with the bomb blast, that she will be killed. We do catch her in the lobby running towards someone, and this is right beside where the Goblin throws the bomb and Peter jumps after it. We can see that it destroys the entire lobby, I think this moment will tie in with the shot of Happy sitting outside in his car, looking completely devastated. Now Green Goblin did go after Aunt May in the Raimi trilogy, and to me it makes sense that he'd do this in the film, as she's such a close person in Peter's life. In the Civil War storyline after Peter's identity is revealed, Aunt May ends up almost getting killed and then Peter goes to Strange to cast a spell to save her. It seems like the movie is loosely pulling from these storylines and adapting them to something new, but at this point I, I don't think that May is going to make it out alive. Hey? Now Peter escapes the goblin bomb with a really close shave, and speaking of close shaves, we've teamed up with Manscaped to bring you that all new in one performance package 4.0. I've been using their stuff for a year now, and it's made a massive difference when it comes to trimming my Peter Parker. Peter Parker, what's up? The Lawn Mower 4.0 is the sleekest electric trimmer Manscaped have ever released, and not only is it waterproof, but it comes with advanced skin safe technology that provides a shave more stylized than Tony Stark's beard. It also has a super smart cordless charging system that gives you power for 90 minutes, and LED lights that make it look like it's powered by the Arc Reactor. 
With it is an amazing travel lock feature as well, so it doesn't set off when you're on the go, and all you have to do to activate it is click the button three times. On top of this, the pack also has two products that I never even knew I needed until now. That is the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant Spray and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Simply apply the Crop Preserver after a shower for all day body odor protection and use the Crop Reviver on your Infinity Stones at any time of the day. Now I'm going to be honest, yeah, I've got, got a bit of a big, big nose, yeah, but the Weed Whacker has been a complete life changer. It's got the same skin safe technology that the lawnmower does, so you don't have to worry about cutting or tugging on sensitive hairs and it just cleans all them out. Now for a limited time only, if you get this, you get two free gifts including the anti-chafing boxer briefs and a travel bag that puts a suit of armor around your kit wherever you go. Go to manscaped.com right now and get 20% off, free international shipping and two gifts as well when you enter Heavy 20 at the checkout. It's the perfect time of year to get one of these amazing kits for yourself, your partner, your best friend, someone you know, guy down the road, anyone will love this, so definitely go check it out. Cheers. Now the spell is going to be a big part of the movie and my theory is that, though it won't work early on in the film, that they'll attempt it again at the end and it will. This is something that we've guessed at in a lot of our previous videos, one of which I'll play right now. Now speaking of the spell, after watching the trailer several times and really sitting on it, I actually think that it does indeed wipe MJ's memory and Peter is pretty much completely alone in who knows that he's Spider-Man. Why I say this is because of the behind the scenes images and footage of the film in which we see Peter going to meet the character. Now because he's not getting mobbed, I guess everything works, but it looks like he's asking her out on a date. I think it would be kind of heartbreaking if it turned out that she no longer remembered him and this is basically them having to start the entire relationship again. I also think this could end up happening with Ned, Happy and possibly even the Avengers, leaving Peter alone to go and do his own thing with Sony, sorry, in the MCU. Now why this could be the case is because that's also how things sort of go in the comics. After Aunt May is put in critical condition, Peter goes to Strange for help. Because May is short on time, Strange ends up playing out several timelines at once in which we see that there's no one who can help her. Thus Peter leaves the Sanctorum, but it's at this point that he comes across Mephisto who says that he'll save May's life, but in return he wants Peter and Mary Jane's marriage. Peter and Mary Jane sacrifice their love in order to save May, and when we see them again, they know each other, but can't ever remember being in love. Peter also makes a deal with Mephisto so that people will also forget that he's Spider-Man, as if they didn't then assassins would just come after him again and his friends and family would be put in the firing line. Now we know from what's been said on the next Spider-Man trilogy that it'll be a lot different to this one, and I think that Peter will go to college and pretty much be on his own. I'd love to see them bring the black suit into it at this point and if we get Tom Hardy interacting with him, that would be great. They've clearly set the symbiote up, so if Peter got the black suit, he could pretty much become someone completely different in his college years. If MJ ends up forgetting they were in love, that also leaves the door open for characters like Black Cat and Gwen Stacy to come into the MCU as well. Now I kind of get the feeling that right after the Statue of Liberty fight, that Strange will do the second spell. In the trailers and TV spots, it looks like Strange is casting one and then this blasts over the entire city. If you compare it to the way that the spell looks the first time Strange tries to cast it, you'll see that it moves in a very similar way just before it fails. Thus, I think at the Statue of Liberty that he'll do the spell once more after setting the villains back to their own realities. This could happen right after Peter kisses MJ in the daytime and it would also explain why he says do it in the TV spots. I know a lot of people think that he's going to end up going to another universe, but I can't see the character leaving the MCU completely just for this. From the looks of it, this kiss in the daytime could be their final one before all is forgotten and that would explain why Strange is casting runes in the sky during this scene. It looks like it's taking place after the Statue of Liberty fight as MJ is wearing the same clothes and Peter is beat up, so doing the spell there makes a lot of sense. When we see Peter in the behind the scenes stuff, it's clearly taking place in winter due to the snow, so the timeline makes sense for them to have been apart for a long time. The first Spider-Man movie had a great ending that showed Spider-Man would rather give up the love of his life than put her in any danger, and add to that Gwen and you can kind of see how Toby and Andrew would rub off on Tom. In the comics after their breakup, Mary Jane actually went on to date Brad and he was introduced in Far From Home as well, so potentially that could be the way things are heading. So yeah, I think the spell will be cast once more at the end without Peter interrupting or stipulating things and this will remove pretty much all of the relationships that he has. 
Now I think the film is pretty much going to have the pace of Infinity War where it's just boom, 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 plot point to plot point and like I've said, I think it's going to be very straightforward. I think after all the stuff I mentioned earlier that Andrew and Toby will be brought across after the chase scene and then from there we'll go to the Statue of Liberty. The villains will get taken down and then sent home along with the heroes who now will no longer want to kill them in their realities and thus they'll be saved in some way. Peter will then ask Strange to do the spell once more and we'll have somewhat of a tragic ending with him not only losing May but also the people closest to him. Now I'd love it if we got another villain in order to make the Sinister Six and though it seems unlikely, Scorpion would be my pick for that. Homecoming of course ended with Michael Mando's Mac Gorgon asking Adrian Toomes who Spider-Man was and then Far From Home ended with his identity being out there. Thus I think it would pay off to have him hunting Peter in the third film and as he knows this reality, he could act as somewhat of a guide to the rest of the villains. Anyway, those are all our predictions and theories and if you're watching this before seeing the movie then let us know yours below. If you're from the future and have now seen it, then let us know what we got right and what we didn't, if, any, if anything. I don't think we got anything right but you've watched the video now. Now obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts though so make sure you comment below and let me know. We are in a competition right now and giving away 3 copies of the Spider-Man 4K trilogies on the 30th of December and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of some of the coolest easter eggs in Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. That will be linked on screen right now and hopefully I see you over there but if not, tell you what mate, go do one. If you do go watch it, I, I love you for the rest of my life and I hope you enjoy the rest of the week and the movie. You take care of yourself, peace.